So I guess I'm live. Guess I'm live now, but I'm looking at the uh, the preview window, and all it shows is me uh, setting up the stream. So um, I wonder. I, I I guess I'm on like crazy delay. Yeah, I'm watching this back, and it's a crazy delay. All right. Well, I think this is working. So as always, guys, let me know. Um, if it looks and sounds good, and uh, if we have any issues that we need to correct immediately as we get rolling here. Sick Jabra ad. It was a Jabra ad. I don't know why there would be a Jabra ad. But what's up, everybody? Uh, pump up the volume a bit. Okay, let me see if I can do that. Volume, let's see, let's go up by three. Is this any better? Is it any better? Hmm. Doesn't look like it's actually peaking any higher. Let me go up a little bit more. Six. Six, okay. So now it's up, now it's getting in, okay. Yeah, now we're in the yellow and a little in the red. Is uh, is that any better? Maybe I could bring my microphone a little bit closer too. All right, hey guys, it's been a while. It has been a while since I have done any streaming and um, and I didn't even publish a video this week and I wanted to kind of touch on that a little bit too as far as uh, what happens and why. Um, and kind of, you know, answer any questions that you might have about that and, you know, what's going on with the channel. Nothing really is going on, but, um, okay. Just checking the auto now, because like I said, we are on a delay. Mike says, yeah, that sounds good. Everybody say hello to Mike, the Manic Geek. As always, in chat as our moderator. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, he has been with me for quite a while now, and... He is, uh, eh, I guess he's okay. Uh, but yeah, say what's up to Mike. And thank you so much for everybody joining us. Right now we have, oh, I guess people are coming in slowly. 25 people in here. Okay. Coming in a little bit faster now. So that's good. I wanted to wait a little bit before we kind of got into it. And exactly what we're doing here on this stream, uh, which involves this guy right here. So I don't, I didn't set up the overhead cam for this particular stream, um, but I did do one of these so you guys can see uh, what's going on on the table here as I'm doing things. And then obviously, of course, we have the side-by-side. -side. So a couple different angles, which uh, I'll switch between as necessary during the stream. Uh, so who's in here? We got uh, Digibrat, we've got uh, Mark Sp uh, Mark's Spark, got Stephen Board, and a um, bunch of other people that are being real quiet. Feel free to, ch to talk up, to talk up, to speak up in the chat and uh, fire away with any questions because I'll just be kind of talking to you guys as I'm doing what we're doing here today and um, love to get you guys involved and answer any questions you might have. Uh, Matthew Lang, hello. Uh, Eric, too busy winning at poker. Um, back playing poker. That's, uh, we'll, we can talk about that if you want. Uh, Sebastian S. Hi, I love your channel and your content a bit different than the other guys. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. I try to be a little bit different while still, you know, hanging out in that PC tech world and realm. And, uh, you know, the, the channel was built on PC hardware reviews and builds and how to's and stuff. And that's not going to change. Uh, but, you know, we try to involve different kinds of content here and there. And we'll talk about that, too. Uh, Xpod X says, I like that case. Looks nice for a land party build. So, yeah. So, why don't we talk about this? So, what I actually, what the title of the stream is, uh, sending this weird case uh, to Gamers Nexus, is exactly what it sounds like. I had built this PC 
uh, two weeks ago on the channel. And uh, when I did, I got a lot of uh, feedback that I needed to send it over to Steve at Gamers Nexus for a full workup and evaluation and review. Because the last time I got a weird case from a kind of an unknown Chinese company in-house and sent it over to him, uh, he absolutely roasted it. And it worked out well for both of us because he got, you know, a million views and... Um, he got to uh, rag on me a little bit in his video, which was also kind of fun. Um, can you show the inside of the case? Yes, I'll show everything. I'm going to get to that in a second. Any updates on the RC cars? Yes, updates on RC cars are coming. I have a couple over here that I want to show you guys. Um, so, so anyway, so I did this build in this case. And part of the process for me doing these projects and these builds is that I do the I do some testing, but my testing isn't exhaustive. It's not super, super thorough, um, but I do play some games essentially, see what kind of temperatures you get at a typical gaming load. So we're not doing super stress testing of these systems, but we're kind of trying to replicate what normal people might experience with a you know standard workload for these kinds of systems. So um, in my testing, this case performed pretty well. I didn't really have any significant complaints about it. I thought it looked really cool. I like the fact that it is just absolutely unique. It's a cylinder. You hardly ever see that. It's got this giant 200 mil fan at the front. Um, it's got some ventilation. Oh, here, let me see if I could uh, maybe switch that up and um, get a different angle on things. So yeah, so we've got this, you know, the ventilation along the top here. Um, Decent I.O. selection, you know, no USB-C, but I don't know. I think that's sometimes okay. I would have liked to see USB-C, but whatever. Um, tempered glass at the front. I know some people commented that um, they wanted to see this whole thing be, be mesh, which I guess would have improved performance. But at the same time, um, aesthetics-wise, this looks really cool when this is all lit up. It's an RGB fan, you know. And then you have, along the side here, you could see through to your graphics card. I guess if I show you guys that here, um, you can see right through to the graphics card. And um, when everything is lit up, you it looks really cool. So um, one of the things that, like literally when I got this case in, I sent a text over to Steve and asked him if he wanted before you guys kind of started telling me that I should do that. Um, because that was my thought as well. So um, when when I got a bunch of comments saying, hey, send this to Steve for testing, because he's going to do more exhaustive testing, really kind of dive into this case's construction and its airflow properties, etc. You guys are familiar with Gamers Nexus. Um, so, you know, he ha he agreed to, to look at it. He said that it would be it would be fun. And he actually also said that. Um, they were supposed to have gotten this case and that it just kind of disappeared in the mail and they never pursued it. So they already had an interest in this enclosure um, and then just never got a chance to review it. So when I offered it to him, he's like, yeah, send it over. So um, I'm glad that you guys are kind of on the same page as we were because we both thought that while this case is cool, uh, it probably needs more data you know, and that's what Steve's going to be able to do. So I wouldn't be surprised if he um, talks about its build quality because um, build quality is, is kind of mediocre. The front panel is actually constructed really well. The top acrylic piece here, let me actually, uh, let me take this off for you guys. Let me see. Uh, all right. So there's a couple of like thumb screws here at the back that come off. And then you could this uh, this acrylic piece that slides like this. So let me show you on um, on this. So this acrylic piece is pretty thin, like it's not super crazy beefy acrylic. It's fine when it's sitting on uh, on top of the case. It's not you know it's not going to go anywhere or cause any problems. But a 
it is acrylic it scratches pretty easily and b it's you know it's pretty flimsy i don't want to flex it too much because it will probably break um and i don't want to put any scratches on it because steve's gonna have to take a look at it so this piece is a little bit you know questionable as far as build quality uh and then uh the rest of the case uses like fairly thin steel although when i was building it again i didn't have any problems but when you're just talking about the feel and the construction of a case like it, it having dealt with a lot of pc cases in in my day um you know you could kind of tell when you get it when you get a case and you start manipulating it and moving it around and and putting components in it that you're like hey, this 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 feels cheap you know um with that being said regardless of the uh the construction of the case or how it, it feels it looks really cool and it performed fine for my uses and i'm really recently at least i've been really interested in these unique build experiences uh whether or not that leads itself to optimal performance that's another question um, but i almost would rather feature a, a unique different kind of build on the channel than another build in a box you know so a couple of weeks ago we did the water cooling project in the cool master master frame 700 uh, that was really fun because that was again something that was completely different um, i've done build before in the thermal take case that i can't remember the nomenclature for m m h something ah that might be wrong the one that looks like a helicopter um that was again very different and although like i didn't really love that build <laughs> it was just cool to see something that was different you see so many metal boxes you could only see so many metal boxes that you think are, are good looking you know so anyway getting back to it what we're doing today is uh we're going to prep this case to send to steve so that means that you know obviously it still has a system in it uh i'm going to take the system out uh put all the stuff away pack it up uh and then i have um i have a sheet of stickers and we're going to put at least one sticker on here somewhere uh for steve to find um and you know i don't want to plaster the whole thing with stickers because he is going to review this case but maybe putting one on the other side of the motherboard tray or something would be funny uh all right so let me read some comments and then we'll start taking this thing apart okay can you show the inside of the case yes I, uh, we will um won't steve be salty uh i think that's kind of the point steve's always kind of salty <clears throat> Would you recommend this case for AFK mining in E? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, is there a cat in that cat carrier? Oh, uh, not at the moment, but there's plenty of cats around here, so you never know. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I put a comment under this case video, but this case is available at Newegg under a different brand. It's the Vitro K2 Mesh. Oh, okay. Um, that's good to know if in case you guys want maybe shorter lead times, but, uh, even though you buy this through Banggood through the, the link that I put in that description, the, they have a U.S. warehouse for these and like likely a, a lot of other items. So they, th there's no problem with shipping them. If you're concerned about shipping times, this takes like two or three days in the continental United States in any event. But if you get it at Newegg too, that's cool. Um, Let's see. Mike says his testing is more sensible for the average consumer to adjust instead of the deep dive stuff like Steve does. Yes, that's kind of the point. Uh, thanks, Mike. I, I That's one of the reasons why I do how I do it, because you want to be able to kind of replicate um, something that people can see and apply to their lives as opposed to, you know, somebody who sees these deep dive tests. And while obviously the data is valid and important, it might not apply to what you're doing at your house. You know, uh, all right. Our super chat came in from Fat Agnes. <laughs> As a bridge and tunnel DJ from Long Island, what music did you spin? Uh huh. 
Line at the rocks, Betty, or Le Barry, or Latin freestyle, or you're not a dinosaur like me. Um, <laughs> I wonder if this is somebody that I know, uh, or if it's just somebody that I know that I, you know, somebody that that knows my 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 past, my history. Yes, I was a DJ from from Long Island in my in my youth, in my youth from uh, maybe like. 2000 to 2005 or 99 to 2005 something like that um and i i used to spin a lot uh at that time that was like when like house music was i mean there was a lot of hip-hop around too but they were like dedicated hip-hop djs at that time so i spun a lot of house music vocal um stuff like that depending on the time of the night and the place that i was booked Sometimes some trance and um, drum and bass and stuff like that, but a lot of house music, a lot of vocal, upbeat, um, you know, dance because you're happy house music. <clears throat> All right. Just got here. What is that? A giveaway? What is this a giveaway? It is not a giveaway. I'm sorry. Uh, last question. Okay. Last question for now because we got to get back to got to get to doing this. Um, Stephen Board, quick question: Would there be a significant performance difference if I use a PCIe slot two instead of one? For my RTX thirty ninety Strix, a PCIe slot two. Do you mean like a lower PCIe slot on the motherboard? Generally, no. Generally, it's fine. Just make sure that they're operating, um, uh, you know, not below by eight. Some motherboards have a by by sixteen, by eight, by four kind of configuration and just make sure you're not putting it in a by four slot and you should be fine. Um, did you, Brett, did you spin in New York city too? Yes. I spun basically uh, all over the tri-state area. Um, and I was on the radio for a while too. Party 105 on Long Island. I don't know if that station still exists, but um, I worked with them a bunch. Uh, all right. So, Let's uh, let's start getting this thing apart. Forget exactly uh, how I put it together, so I'm gonna have to try to figure out a way to go in reverse here. Where did my screwdriver go? Literally, the one thing I need is not here on my table. Wonderful. Okay. So I'll have to use a different screwdriver. How about that? All right. All right, so is this view better or is this view better? Maybe this is better for we're doing this for now, even though this makes it very difficult for me to see. Well, this is not the screwdriver I need. All right, hold on. I got to get a screwdriver. All right, we're back. All right, let me, uh, let me see if I can pop this chat out. Make things a little bit easier. Okay. Okay. So here we go. All right. What do you guys want to chat about, huh? Second view. Yeah, we'll keep this view for now. You know, I had, so I see some comments about tearing. The last stream I did, I also got some comments about, um, about screen tearing. And I wasn't able to replicate that on my end. I don't, I'm not saying that it, that it wasn't coming through that way. It's, it's certainly possible that it was, 
But if I can't replicate it, it's almost impossible for me to diagnose. So unfortunately, I'm not sure what the cause of it is or how to fix it. So I'm really sorry about that. I hope that that doesn't um, like ruin your viewing experience. All right. So got the video card out. For those of you guys who missed this build, this was a uh, 6700 XT. And it performed really well. Wow, I'm way out of focus. Camera, find my face. Find my face. All right, Sony. I'm going to play like that, huh? So I really like the... I mean, I know obviously there are a lot of problems right now with every kind of availability, availability of every kind of GPU and etc. I, 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 everybody's familiar with those problems. I don't really want to address them in this stream at, at any length. But just talking about the performance of the card itself, this is a great card. And I hope that at some point they come back into stock and people can buy them because they are a really good value for the price that they are supposed to be. Okay. Um, all right. So, yes, you guys want to see how this is constructed, like the... The radiator is is kind of screwed to this top bracket piece, uh, and then the motherboard is inside here. And then these bottom panels, each one of these sides comes off, so you can access underneath and get to the power supply, and then all the I/O in the back. Right. Um. Yeah. So one thing that I did here was I drilled holes in this case. So I'm gonna to have to tell Steve about this. So I drilled holes here in order to improve my cable management. These, I, I just didn't cut these zip ties off, but you could see like inside here that I ran the wiring along this rim to prevent it from kind of dangling down because if it, it's dangles down and you're seeing in through this side, then it looks like a mess. Um, but with, I drilled two little holes and then I stuck zip ties through them and then problem solved. Um, so that's, that is something to keep in mind whenever you guys are building. Pro tip, uh, don't be afraid to mod your case, even if it's as, like a simple thing as like drilling a hole so that you could fit a zip tie properly. Like that's, make it something that works for you. It's your property. It doesn't have to stay exactly the same as it is. And, um, you know, if it benefits you, then do it. Don't be, don't be afraid to take a chance. Uh, only known as tearing in the ACAM. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, let's. Uh, so we're gonna get the back of this off. I guess I'll do this. Actually, this is really awkward. This is a really awkward way for me to do this. Um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna leave it on this view for now because I have to do screws. I'll do screws back here. If it ain't modded, it's not yours. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> but I mean, you should. Like I said, don't be afraid to to try it. Like what? Especially something small, like drilling a little hole or something. Like, what's the absolute worst that can happen? You have a tiny hole in your case. You know, who cares? Sorry, I'm, try I'm trying to monitor the comments and questions and stuff while I'm doing this. So this panel, as you guys can see, took out a couple screws. There's actually supposed to be a, a third screw at the bottom that I never put back in. Um, but the foot, the feet are attached to these panels. There's one on this side, and then one on the other side. Uh, and that way you can then see that you can access the power supply down here in this chamber, or it's actually over here. Uh, and then the drive cages are over here too. So the whole piece comes off and it gives you a lot of access to this area, which is really cool. Like I think that this, this, this case has a lot going for it. Granted, it does have some issues, but man, I, I think they did, they definitely did at least a few things right. All right, ACAM is where I noticed the issue. All right, well. 
I guess maybe I'll have to look into that at some point. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what the issue could be. There, It's the same camera. So, you know, I, I don't know why one would be uh, functioning differently than the other. The only time I saw it was when he held up the stickers. Well, maybe I shouldn't hold up the stickers anymore. All right. There is our cooler. Um, this cooler works really well. Uh, this is an Intel system. And I know um, that's not really in vogue right now, but I mean, I used a 10700K uh, and it performed really well. And this cooler was perfect for it. The, there's a lot of, a lot of times I get a lot of questions. A lot of times I get a lot of questions. I get questions often about what coolers people should use. And a lot of times I see people allocating uh, incorrect percentages of their funds towards coolers they don't need. Um, if you think about it like this, As recently as like, you know, 10 years ago, how many people had AIO coolers in their systems? Not many. Most were still air-cooled, right? So AIO coolers come on the scene and the first ones that are debuted uh, kind of suck. Uh, I mean, I guess they're fine, but they have a high failure rate uh, and they're kind of noisy and, you know, they're not an ideal solution. Like it was just better to stick with air coolers for a while. Uh, and those, a lot of those chips were still really power hungry, you know? So granted, modern chips are gonna consume more power and need better cooling, but it hasn't scaled to the point where every chip needs a 360 millimeter radiator. You have, um, I mean, a 10700K is an eight core 16 thread chip and it's in a mini ITX case and a 240 is more than enough. So if you're one of those people that, you know, is configuring a system and overspending on something like a cooler, just consider where else you can or how you can better spend your money. Either just save it or move it down to a lower end cooler that would still work for you and use those funds and put it somewhere else. Buy more storage or more memory or whatever. Um, it's it's one of the things that I've I've talked about quite often here is having a, a system that's um, that's balanced, and you don't want to be overkill on one thing and deficient in something else. All right, flying right along here, flying along. We go. How about that? That's not a bad view. That'll work. That'll work for the people. Um. All right. Let's see some comments. What do we got here? Um. Interesting case for sure. I should mount it in the back of my truck next to the base tube. Yeah, they look very similar. Um, fun fact, the first com commercial AIO was a whole case and it was from a thermal take. We laughed. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Using a 5950X and a 280 millimeter radiator. Yeah. So a 5950X, I think is a, is a perfectly good scenario where you could use a 360 if you, you know, if you wanted to. But to be honest, I bet your 280 still does the job, you know, like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm always, I'm, I'm very preachy when it comes to this kind of stuff. Like, just be aware of what your needs are. Like, educate yourself about the cooling potential of your, of your case and build. And educate yourself about the power requirements of your CPU. And then take it from there. Uh, I'm not saying I can't. I can't see where the screwdriver is going. I'm. I'm just guessing. I'm, look, 
my I'm like, I'm looking at it, it's over there. Maybe I should actually look. So I'm not saying that, you know, it's not it's never a good idea to use a bigger cooler. Like that would be silly. Of course I'm not saying that. But you know, just do some research. I'm sure you guys will figure it out. Ta-da! There it goes. And don't forget to do this. I forget these so often. So, so often. So often. Okay. Nice case, but hardware inside looks cheap. Oh, okay. I didn't think it looked cheap. Um, I just bought a Crosshair 7X470 for $120. Seems like a good deal. Will the Ryzen 7 3800X work in it without much fuss? Yes, that would work perfectly. I think 470X470 should work. Yeah, there shouldn't be any issues. Um, I don't think you'll need a BIOS update. Wait, I'm just trying to think of the generations. Of, uh, you might need a BIOS update. It might need a BIOS update, but th that board should have BIOS flashback, so it shouldn't be an issue. Um, okay. So, let's get the... Before we disassemble this stuff, let's get the power supply out, and that way we could kind of move the case to the side. You guys played any good games recently? I haven't been gaming like at all. I haven't played any games um, quite a long time. I played the last game I played with any regularity or that I really tried to get into was Cyberpunk. And um, that didn't last too long. Do you guys, are you guys still playing Cyberpunk? Like how, how did that game evolve? I, I just couldn't get into it with there was so many problems with that game. And maybe also it wasn't as engrossing as I wanted it to be. But maybe that was as a result of there being so many issues with the game itself. You know, technical issues. So, I don't know. I couldn't get into it. I really wanted to. Digibret says, I don't know anyone who still plays it. Yeah, that's kind of a shame, right? The most hyped up game of, like, forever. Only Warzone. Oh, Warzone's cool. All right, the power supply is out. All right, we're gonna um, we're gonna put this case off to the side, and then we're going to um, put it back together shortly. Okay. So what do we got going on here? Um, Mike says I've been vibing on the new Borderlands Three content. You were always in, you were into Borderlands Three. Last CES. Mike, why don't you tell the story about how you tried to play Borderlands 3 on, and try, almost wiped your account or something like that. Forget exactly what happened there, but I had a... So, Mike was my production assistant at CES, and um, I, I had two... La I brought two laptops. Like, I bring my laptop, and we had a, a company sponsor a laptop for us uh, for secondary editing content, you know, content offloading, stuff like that. And we had some downtime, which is unusual, but it happens occasionally. And Mike's like, hey, I'm going to play some Borderlands. I'm like, cool, just go for it, you know. And um, next thing I know, he was he was like, I don't know. He, he was up in arms because his, I think his Borderlands account, all of a sudden, like, everything got deleted out of it or something. I think, from what I remember, I'm only laughing because from what I remember, I think he was able to recover it. Um, but yeah, he was freaking out about that. But he's been playing Borderlands for a long time. Uh, okay, so what I recently started over the GTA 5 campaign. Wow, wow, taking it back, man. Taking it back. GTA 5 Warzone. Um, yeah, Warzone. Soldier, I soldiered through Cyberpunk, it wasn't great. That's kind of what I felt. Like, I, I, I was like. There's got to be something to this game. There's got to be some hook in here that I'm missing. You know, either it's either I'm not the target audience or I just wasn't vibing with that with the with what makes the game kind of addictive. 
You know, like a game. I don't. Maybe it. Maybe it's just not my type of game. I don't know. Um. I'm just over here patiently waiting for the re-release of Oregon Trail with ray tracing. Well, wouldn't put it past. Them. All right, power supply boxed up. Okay, on the board, and then all that good stuff is next. Okay. Um, why don't I take the cooler off? first and of course i didn't bring any paper towels or anything over here so mike says holy s word because we don't curse on this channel ever just kidding we do mike says holy snot i tried to load up the game on his laptop and it synced over every single one of my game files well that will teach you to try to be playing when you should be working uh, Carl Wells is bouncing between Pillars of Eternity and Battletech. I don't think I haven't played either of those games. Um, Digibrat says, my nephew is playing the new Resident Evil. Says it's good. Yeah, you know, so that's the thing, right? Even if we go through a spell where there's not a lot of great games, you could always go back and play something that's older. Uh, and then eventually, something new will come out that's cool. And one of the great things about PC gaming in general, it's like nothing ever really goes out of style. But my brother sent me a text message the other day saying he was going to play Ret uh, uh, Rise of the Triad. Do you guys remember Rise of the Triad? Rise of the Triad was um, a first-person shooter in the like the Doom Wolfenstein era. That game we used to play on our Pentium 60, like our original Pentium 60. That was like, I can't even count how many years ago at this point. But he said, apparently it's on Steam. He's going to start playing it again. Like, that's that's great. Like, if only, like, every form of entertainment could be like that, right? Where you could just be like, well, you know what? I'm going to go back and do something that I used to do 25 years ago, and it's still going to be fun, and it's still possible to do, you know? Um, all right, I got to get, uh, let's see. Gamers Nexus, $50. Hello, BPS costumes. How to build a computer. Well, we're unbuilding a computer right now, so I'm not quite sure if this is the right... You might have turned tuned into the wrong stream. Um, this is how to unbuild a computer to send off to somebody who will probably uh, talk a lot of shit about it. That's, that's what we're doing today. Um, but I got your case. It's right here. This is the one that's coming over to you. What's up, buddy? All right, I'll be right back. I got to get paper. By the way, $50? You're crazy, man. I got to buy you lunch. <laughs> Steve's just gonna troll me for the rest the rest of this stream. <laughs> Which I appreciate. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm reading your messages, sir. I am reading your messages. Yeah, I'm taking it apart. It already looks like a trash can, yeah. It's all coming apart. I'm gonna send it to you in pieces and you're gonna have to figure out how to assemble it. <clears throat> All right. Uh, cooler is off. Let's get these out of here. Uh, I'm going to have to... Uh, okay, yeah. Let's see, it's me some time. Uh, Safety Trouser says the two old PC games I've tried to play I gave up on they seem so clunky compared to modern games I guess you know I guess that's certainly true modern games definitely will have advantages um, 
but you know the fact that you have the ability to be able to go back and play those older games i think that that's that's awesome you know um i've i've done that myself off i go back and play a lot of emulated games steve stop sending me money <laughs> autograph the case so i don't know steve i have these stickers do you want do you want these stickers all over the case because we i could just i could just blanket the case in these things and uh and make it just like a blatant advertisement for bps customs on the gamers nexus channel would that be what you want <laughs> anyway so you know there's a the game the retro game that i have played the most is actually um uh it's a super nintendo game or a super famicom game uh final fantasy three slash six and um what am i doing and i play it like on an emulator on the pc or you could play it like you could buy you could get it on an ipad now and that game came out in i don't know 1998 or something i don't know six and it's awesome i love it so um all right, what else are we doing? Oh, um, M.2. Yes. So if you guys have, uh, if you guys never see me, like, um, you want the one and only BPS signature case? <laughs> yeah, I should, uh, I should find something interesting to do with it before I send it over. Um, so if you guys never see me, like, install or talk about the storage that I'm putting in a build, it's generally now, I used to do it a lot, and I still do from time to time, but um, for the most part now, I am, I, I just put in like a, a one terabyte M.2, and depending on the system that I'm building, like if it's an Intel or an AMD system, geez, come on, come on, screw. Uh, it's a different drive that has the appropriate you know drivers and whatnot, um, but it's all like pre-populated. So this is one of them that I use a lot, which is the Western Digital SN 750. And it just has everything that I need on it already. I don't have to worry about um, doing all kinds of crazy installs for the testing that I do. It's not all that important because the testing isn't super, super thorough. <laughs> Steve, 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 I appreciate you. <laughs> Um, do you want the, do you, it's for a Sharpie. Do you want the Sharpie? Do you want me to send you the Sharpie as well with the, with the case? I'll sign the case and send you, figure something out. We'll talk. Um, <laughs> yeah, the bank is going to freeze his card now. Uh, all right. I can put, I should put some cat stickers on the case. Well, if I was if I was driving it down there, I would uh, I would just I would bring one of my cats with me. Uh, oh oh, I O shield. Uh, that's it, right? I think that's it for this box, and done. All right. All right. This camera, it's focus on this camera is terrible. Actually, it's actually supposed to be really good. It's not fine on my face. This is my face. Focus. All right. Cooler. Time to do the cooler. Get yourself something nice. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> I bought myself a nice Sharpie with that 279. All right. So why don't we do... Hey, we haven't done this. I'm going to do a side-by-side. -side. You could use... Rufus to make a bootable USB stick with tools on it works really well. Might be a good thing to try at some point. Okay, that's interesting. <clears throat> it's focusing on the AO. Yeah, eh, well, that's all right. Got to go work now. See you later, Steve. I'll um, I'll text you um when this is all wrapped up and ready to go, and BPS Customs customized. As requested.
All right. All right. Um, fans are off. This, I'm going to disassemble this now. You know, I've gotten to the point where it's very rare that I read instruction manuals on coolers. And that's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. Most of them I could figure out without an issue. Um, but some, sometimes when I'm not reading an instruction manual on a cooler, things go horribly, horribly. Like I'll mount something and I'll think it's the way it's supposed to be mounted and it won't be making any contact with the CPU. I've done that a couple times. Uh, right. Uh, where's the cooler box? Cooler box. Cooler box. And one thing that I have learned over these years is I don't ever throw boxes away, which causes a problem with storage, but honestly, you need them more often than you think. And if you are building at home, uh, easy way to store your stuff, put everything in the case box. Everything generally will fit. So you just have the case box and, um, and that's all you need to store as opposed to a whole bunch of other boxes too. And that way you have everything in one place in case you need to return something or if you sell something or you just need a part out of a box, whatever, it's all, it's all there. Uh, okay. Go back to uh, this view. Okay. So what else is going on, guys? How has your week been? Oh, you know what I want to talk to you guys about? About Because um, I didn't publish this week. And I got uh, some questions on Twitter about it. And I just wanted to clarify, there was no problem. Like I didn't have any issues. It was, um, I had, I just had a whole bunch of, my, my weekend was very busy with personal stuff. And the weekends, typically I do some filming during the week. Um, but the majority of like my, um, the majority of the video editing and like a lot of the A-roll gets filmed like on Saturday. And then, like, I edit on Saturday and Sunday. Anyway, a lot of the work for the videos gets done on the weekend. And this weekend, I unfortunately just didn't have a whole lot of time. I probably could have squeezed it in. But um, to be honest with you guys, the, the I don't know, interest in this kind of content is so, so low right now. And I know that doesn't translate to every channel. But I know there are at least some channels that are kind of experiencing it, too. And, uh, you know, when views are really, really low and it's hard to find time to do a video, sometimes it's, I don't know, I kind of, I kind of felt like I could use the break anyway. So I took a week off. Um, wasn't a big deal. I'm not going anywhere. You know, nothing is changing. It just, just took a week off. And like I said, I got a bunch of people asking me on Twitter where those, where the videos were. Um, so that's what happened. Um, we'll be back very shortly, um, next week. These screws go in the stupid cooler box. Um, so hopefully, like, you know, hopefully soon interest is kind of sparked again and people become interested in this content. Um, you know, it's hard coming up with different things to fill uh, release dates and schedules considering that it's, it's hard to do PC builds right now. Nobody wants to see them. So that's why you're seeing like different kinds of content from a lot of your favorite creators, myself included. Um, and you know, that's probably going to stay that way uh, for a while until, you know, people can start buying the stuff that they want to buy. Um, since you've gotten into RC content, have you thought about picking up a drone? I have a drone. I have a, um, I have a Mavic Pro. I saw a few videos from Jay when they were playing with drones. They were doing like FPE stuff. And um, the um, the Mavic Pro is, uh, I guess it's more of a cinematic drone. It's got like a race mode. 
which does like 40 miles an hour, but it's not an FPV drone, so it's not a race drone by any means. And it's um, it's not small. It's like, it's you know, it folds out to be like this big. It's a blast to fly, um, but it's, yeah, it's not the same kind of class of, of thing. <clears throat> Steve has been in everyone's streams today. He was on the full nerd from PC World trolling Gordon. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. That guy is just full on troll. Full on. That's his profession in life. All right. So we got to sign this. We got to put a sticker somewhere. So. All right. So I'm going to put one. I'm going to put one down here. Okay. Um, let's see. You can put like. I can put one of these. I can put one of the little ones down here, right? I don't think the big one will really fit. It's a little long. Uh, yeah, probably one of the little ones down there. And then I probably where should I put the other one? Okay, I'm gonna put two on here. Um, I don't want to put it on the outside because I'm gonna sign the outside of the case. Should I put it on top of the motherboard tray? Should I put it on the power supply? Shroud or underneath the motherboard tray. Okay, number in the comments, um, answer one for on top of the motherboard tray, two for underneath the motherboard tray, and three for the power supply. Okay, because um, just keep in mind though that we want to make it so that he could still review this case. I don't want to destroy it or anything, you know. Um, but it'll be it'll be funny. <clears throat> uh, let's see, bottom of the tray, somewhere hard to reach. <laughs> so we're gonna put one of them. One of them's gonna go right here. Jesus. This is the problem with a circular case. I'm trying to hold this thing upright and it's just, just rolling away. Uh, any plans for covering virtual Computex? So Computex, I'm so sad about Computex. I So when they announced that Computex was going to happen, they said that it was going to be um, an in-person event. And when they announced that it was going to be an in-person event, that was at a time when um i thought that i would be able to go you know i thought that things would be resolved by then um people would be vaccinated by then oh geez i messed this sticker up all right there we go good um people would be vaccinated by then which i am vaccinated um but the thing is like tr there's still so many travel restrictions Two, 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 under the motherboard tray. Okay. Put it under the motherboard tray. Uh, there's still so many travel restrictions. We can't really go to Asia, et cetera. So as soon as we got like closer and closer to that um, time, I kind of realized like, you know, this isn't going to happen. So um, that was unfortunate. I really just do want to go to an in-person event and CES next year is just going to be probably crazy. Uh, with people just you know having 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 not seen each other and I guess at that point years it'll be since like CES 2020 since people will have seen people you know a lot of their a lot of their friends so how about here we go there's the other one how's that how does that look I guess there we go right I like that Good choice, guys. All right, Jeff M in the house. What's up? What's up, Ryan and everyone? Super late to the party, but how's it going? Eh, it's going. All right. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, um, Computex. So I am disappointed that this isn't something that we're gonna, you know, be doing as a community. Um, I was never. My channel never really did any, you know coverage of virtual events kind of, kind of videos. If something important happens, then I will try to 
do some kind of video feature on it. Um, but for the most part, I would say no. <laughs> I would say like there, are, you know, like Steve is probably going to do a lot of videos on on those announcements, and Paul usually does some. Um, so if you're if that's the kind of footage, the content that you're looking for, I would count on those channels first. Um, but you know, I, I'm not against it. I just never have been somebody that did it. Honestly, it's it's mostly because I have a nine to five job. And if something breaks in the middle of the day and, you know, we need to make a story on it that night, I, I, I can't, I, I'm, I'm handcuffed because I'm doing other work and that will always, that other work will always take priority. At least, I mean, I, I don't know about always, but at least for now, um, that's my priority. So, um, I do this in my spare time. And unfortunately that means that, you know, I can't always be the first one on a news item. And am I missing? I'm missing a PCIe slot cover. Um, that's okay. You could do without it. Okay. And I think this goes like. Oh no, this goes like this. What am I doing? What am I new here? Um, Mike says CES will be madness, utter madness, and I'm here for it. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, I feel like CES will be more greeting old friends and less computer coverage. Honestly, I plan on um cutting back. It, it, I plan on cutting back on the amount of content that I commit to. And the only thing that really affects is like sponsor dollars, like how many sponsors I can accept and or how much I can charge them, which doesn't affect you guys. It just affects the cost that I have to outlay. And honestly, I'd rather. So in the uh, past few years, my costs for CES, um, I have covered uh, my cost and Mike's cost through sponsorships. I haven't made any money on CES sponsorships, trust me. But for the most part, my co my costs have been covered, and that's been nice. But if I'm gonna, th that means that I have to say, you know, this is how much a, a sponsorship is gonna cost because we're gonna be able to publish X number of videos. And if we're not publishing X number of videos, that means that the cost is less. And that's fine by me because likely I will have a much better time, not super stressed out every day. And maybe instead of booking, <clears throat> I don't know, five meetings a day, I'll book two or three meetings a day. And both myself and Mike will have more time to just kind of relax and enjoy ourselves and not go crazy. Um, and I think that will probably work out better for everybody. Like I'll be better off because I won't be dead tired and Mike won't be dead tired and having not eaten for days. Um, and also you guys will probably get content that is more reflective of a of a, a, a more involved effort you know like i'll be able to dedicate more time i want to be like okay my meeting here is for an hour and i can't stay longer than an hour you know i'll maybe i'll be able to spend two hours or I'll at least be able to get maybe more information or do a a longer edit or something so hopefully the content might be a little bit better for you guys and also i will be i don't know happier while I'm there. So that's probably the plan. Um, so Mike, I hope you're happy with that. We're going to, we'll, we'll do less, we'll do less work next time. And you'll still get to go to Vegas. <laughs> so, um, would be nice to, um, would be nice to go to Las Vegas for CES. I have a cousin that lives there. I could probably stay with. So you could certainly do that. Um, the issue is that um, in order to get like into CES proper, like this the um, the convention center, you have to be industry affiliated. So I don't I don't know Josh. I don't know if you are or not. Um, but you need to be able to when you register with the Consumer Electronics Association, 
you need to be able to prove that you're some some way in the technology business and they, they, who they accept is pretty broad um but you know they, they they certainly do have some standards so i don't i don't know if you can get in i i'd recommend that i think the first time you go a ticket is oh geez maybe a hundred bucks maybe once you get established with them though it you become an alumni and it's free um so if you could get in i would recommend um I'm down for that quality over quantity plenty of other folks there to cover the rest of the show yeah uh i mean i'm sure that everybody at some point will be covering what you some somebody at some point will be covering what you want to see uh, okay matthew lang says uh would you do one of the final videos you and mike just hanging out could be going out to eat or hitting up something like a go-kart track something relaxed to unwind yeah i'd be down for sure um I, I I think that would be fun. Maybe even not just I mean sure, just me and Mike, or it could be like a bunch of like YouTuber people together. Paul often does vlogs like that where he'll have everybody in, in the vlog. Um so but yeah, I think that would be a lot of fun. And uh we could certainly work in something like that, especially if we have a lighter content schedule. Like having the normal content schedule that we had been doing the past couple of years, a video like that is not really possible. It just I, it's hard to describe how how um, how crazy that time is. Uh, did I forget something? I don't think so. Case looks like a literal jet engine. Yeah, it's really cool. I like it a lot. Uh, James uh, Newington, I think I made a mistake. I bought a couple AM3 Plus motherboards and planned my retro build around them. Okay. Uh, I then looked up fastest AM3 Plus CPUs and the FX systems came up. YouTube videos say they suck. So the, those CPUs aren't great, but if you're doing a retro build, you're not going to be getting their most cutting edge stuff anyway. And um, one benefit of those CPUs is that they are uh, especially like the um, 95 well, 957 9590 damn I forget the numbers the the 9000 series of AM, AMD processors are highly overclockable and a lot of fun to play with so if that's something that you're into that might be you know benefit of going with a platform like that where you have a couple of different options for processors. And then if you get one of the good ones, you kind of go nuts on overclocking. <clears throat> um, this case, yeah. People are really commenting on this case. This case is, is so cool. I like this case a lot. If you guys are interested in this case, I did a build in it. So that's what we're doing right now. We're disassembling this to send this to Steve. So if you uh, are interested in the build, uh, the last video I published from a week or two ago, uh, did a build in this case. Uh, all right, let's, uh, hopefully the camera sees me now. Um, when I worked in retail down here in New Zealand, Whoever sold the most monster cable products in Australia and New Zealand would get to go to CES paid. That's awesome. There's a store in, in uh, Oz that went five years in a row. Wow. Well, you should have worked a little harder then, huh? Actually, from New Zealand, that's got to be a crazy expensive trip. Um... Talk show or podcast style with other channels can become quite fantastic in content quality. So yeah, so maybe we, maybe we could work on something like that where um, we're just still covering like the major brands. Like you'll see a video from, you know, Asus and Corsair and, you know, companies like that. Um, and then we'll focus some of our other content on talking to other, other creators in this space. 
and uh, maybe get you some interviews with some some interesting folks. So maybe we'll, maybe I could plan that. That that would be fun. It would be a little bit different. I keep looking at the screen to make sure that I'm in focus, and I'm like mostly not. Fifty six hundred G. When I I don't have one. Sorry. Um. All right. Um, thought about doing any more 3D printer content. I have thought about it, uh, but the that content performed really poorly for me. But looking back on it, maybe that was just kind of a function of a lot of my videos are performing pretty poorly right now. So I, I don't know. I, I would love to. I really enjoy 3D printing. I've been printing a lot of stuff for my cars and um, it's definitely very interesting and, and an awesome technology. So I would like to do more 3D printing content. What do you guys want to see? Like, what would you want to see me print? Uh, anything in particular? You know, do you want to see me uh, try to design something or just, you know, or what? Let me know. Uh, check, the t check the tube build, guys. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, there is some weird autofocus issue. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Let me go get a Sharpie so that I can sign this case. I'm going to have to get like a, like, a, like a paint pen or something. I don't know. Hold on. I'll be right back. All right, we're back, guys. So, have an issue here. I think I might need to buy like a paint pen or something um, because the only like non-black sharpies I have are like here, this like a maroon and a red, and I had a dark blue, and I don't think um, any of them are really going to show up that well on a black case. So I think I need to get like a like some kind of obnoxious paint pen. Or something and just like scrawl my name across the side of this uh yeah so i guess we're not going to sign this tonight sorry uh but i did want to just show you guys a couple well, like two more things uh all right remix what's up man good to see you in here so this is the case i have the box over here it's all done we're all prepped going back to steve and uh, hopefully he makes uh, a terrible video about it. So I got a couple questions about um, about like RC content because I guess some of you. So here's the thing: like I have noticed that um, while the RC content doesn't exactly get like killer views, 
the people who are watching that content and uh, engaging with it are super enthusiastic. Like it seems like the people who are watching it really are like seeking it out because they really enjoy it. And that's what I want. Like I understand that this is a PC tech channel and RC stuff is kind of not, it's not PC, it's tech, but it's not PC. So I get it. Like I know that those views are not gonna be the same. They're not gonna be consistent with my PC content. But I'm glad that the people who are watching it really are enjoying it because that's one of the reasons that I started doing it is because it's a tech hobby that is so fun. And um, I was able to make the content without really interfering with me having fun, you know, which would have been, it, it would have been, I don't know, it would have prevented me from moving forward if that was the case, uh, if it became another chore to, to film, you know. I didn't want that. It's one of the reasons I stopped doing like actual car content because if I'm working on my car, um, setting up a camera to film different angles and stuff, that is that's so hard. And I don't really want to do that, you know. Um, so I stopped doing the car content, even though I might do some more in the future. But RC stuff, honestly, like I could just stick a GoPro on my hat and film what I'm doing and it's, it's still awesome. So it's not really a problem. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, so what I wanted to show you guys was uh, just a, an interesting exercise in scale. So this, if you guys saw my video from a couple weeks ago, is the, oh, I see it. I see it. I saw a tear. I, now I can't replicate it. Anyway, um, this is a, a low C mini B. This is a 114 scale. It's supposed to be an off road buggy. I made it like into a speed run type of car. Um, and this went, we got this to go 71 miles an hour, which is for this scale of a car, incredible. Uh, and I'm very proud of that. It is still, I think, the world's fastest low C mini B. I think. I don't, I could be wrong, but um, so this is a 112 scale buggy. The um, the car that I demolished um, that I was trying to hit 100 miles an hour with is this car. This is a one four. This is a one twelfth scale car. Uh, this is the WL Toys one two four zero one nine, and I have another one, and I rebuilt it. And this setup is so fast, but I need a different body to put on it because the way I have the motor and gearing set up, the stock body won't fit. So I've ordered another body, should be here later in the week. Um, and then I'll have another video with this setup. And I'm hoping that we break a hundred as long as, I think we will, as long as I don't wreck the car. This, I've had this out front of my house running it around and it's so fast. I could not believe how fast it was with this setup. Anyway. One one fourteenth, one twelfth. Okay. Let me move these off to the side. One of the projects that I'm very excited for. Um, this is a one fifth scale. <laughs> this is, this thing is so, so comically large that, um, it's, it's, I don't know. I've never, I used to, I used to be into RCs when I was a kid. And one of the reasons that I, um, I started getting back into it as an adult. Because, you know, it, it makes you feel like you're younger and, you know, it's something you always had interest in and having a little more means now you could buy what you want and make, you know, modify the cars and stuff. But when I was a kid, um, I was into one tenth scale buggies. So this is a one twelfth, right? One tenth is a little bit bigger than this. And I was into like one tenth scale off-road racing. And... When I, I was never really interested in like the at the time the next biggest thing was like a one eighth scale which is obviously a little bit bigger than that 
And I was like, oh, those are too big. I don't want to mess with that. And when I get back into it, um, I was like, I was like, I am interested in these big cars. How, how is it to work on and run these cars? And I got this thing. I was, I was, I became, this is a Armour Creighton 8S EXB. And when this thing came out, I was like, I got to get one. And I was not prepared for, <laughs> for how, how big it is, right? I'm looking at myself like in comparison to this truck. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to show you how it's the half the size of my body. Um, and it's so cool looking and I haven't built it yet. It's still without any electronics in it. So when I get this thing fired up, um, I, I just can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to, it's going to put the biggest smile on my face. And that's kind of like what the whole point of this is. Right. Um, so yeah. Well, this is like where, where you know, how it started, uh, how it's going, or you versus the guy that she tells you not to worry about, right? Um, so anyway, this will be on the channel eventually when I build it. I am interested to see, do you guys want to see the process of building this car? Not like putting together the, you know, the arms and the chassis and stuff, but like, the electronics, the motor, the speed control, the servo, um, you know, testing everything out, stuff like that. Are you interested in that or do you just want to see me like take it out to like a BMX track and rip around on some giant jumps and stuff? That's the fun part. But I know some people are interested in the technical aspect of it. Um, anyway, so this <laughs> is so big. Um but yeah, this thing looks, this thing looks so fun and I can't wait to use it. So I hope you guys are, are into this, you know, because this is kind of like a release for me, right? This is, um, I do my nine to five job during the week and then on the weekends I'm doing a lot of PC builds and stuff like that. And then if I, if I just want to like blow off some steam, I could take out one of these cars and just like, I don't know, you know, shoot it off of a BMX ramp and it goes 30 feet in the air. And it's just like, it's just craziness. It's just, it's so, it's, it's such a different kind of fun. Um, but you know, I know a lot of you, a lot of you guys might be interested in it, so that's why I'm trying to feature it on the channel. Um, okay, let me let me go back. Let me scroll up. Why well, you had that there the whole time? Yeah, I had this under the table actually. Um, I planned on you know, obviously I planned on showing you guys, but yeah, it was it was under the table the whole time. Um, this kind of stuff my uncle used to mess around with back in the day. Yeah, so this is so this isn't like in the RC world. This isn't classified as a, a monster truck. This is like a um, this is more like a stunt truck or a truggy, um, because it's like low slung and and really wide. Look how look how wide it is. You know, um, I have a a, a one ten scale monster truck over there that obviously is smaller, but the proportions are different. You know, the wheels are closer in the wheelbase isn't as stretched wide and it's made more for like bashing things like jumping over, you know, like this is, this could actually like be good at a track because it has a nice wide stance, but at the same time you could just, you know, have you do, you do stupid stuff with it. Um, I used to love RC cars back in my youth and the 164th scale slot car racing. I used to do slot car racing. We had a track by, by my house when we were growing up. That was a lot of fun. Um, we want all the details, make like a five or six part series. Uh, be more than happy with just taking it for a rip. I wouldn't mind seeing the build process. Um, build process, build process. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. Um, so anyway... So yeah, we've been uh, I've been on here for an hour and twenty, and usually I like to keep these things to about an hour. So we're gonna we're gonna cut out right now. Um, but thank you so much for joining in and watching me disassemble the uh, the two PC. This guy, this guy right here. Um, hold on, lost my uh, yeah. So uh, if this gives you any sense of scale, like this is an entire PC.
and uh, <laughs> versus that truck. Um, but yeah, we disassembled this and it's going off to Steve and you'll see a video on his channel. Um, oh, I, I mean, I don't know when. Well, I'm probably gonna send this out later in the week and then um, he'll have, you know, obviously some lead time and testing it and whatnot. Um, but yeah, thanks so much guys for, uh, for hanging out and uh, you'll see a new video from me this week, Sunday. Stay tuned, get subscribed, all that good stuff. If you're not, I'm sure you guys are. Thanks, I appreciate you. Um, all right, um, let me end the stream. Where's the end? Where's the go away button? There it is. All right, thanks guys. See you later.